See if we can't get some more consensus action when the sky take on the fever. The fever in this one are up to a three-point favorite now. There's your movement, Mindy. It's obviously on the fever. <laughs> right. Um, you know, they were as low as probably uh, two. Maybe I even saw it send out at minus one. And the total here in this one is 160 and a half. Uh, these totals are starting to go down. We're starting to see those fourth quarters, Mindy. I know. It's the biggest sweat out there, Ramon, seeing if they can get over a total while they're putting up only five points with, you know, uh, six minutes to go in, in the final quarter. Yeah. I mean, the scores are definitely right. At halftime, it's like 80 to 80. It's like, uh, yeah, so what are we thinking? Are we thinking that these uh, ladies are kind of running out of gas at the end? Is that the deal? Well, I, I also want to equate it a little bit to NBA play, that there's a little bit more defense. And I think with uh, the women's game, the defense is going to become – is a little bit more defensive. Uh, how's that? But I think creative shot makers in the NBA and their uh, ability to elevate above the rim does allow for them to be a little bit more effective offensively. Uh, the defense intensity in both genders are going to be there maybe a little bit more in the fourth. Okay. And uh, I think that's kind of how I feel about it. One thing that's interesting intensity though, rather than uh, lack of uh, conditioning. One, yeah, right. And one thing that is interesting, and it doesn't necessarily equate because we do see the game slow down, but uh, one thing in the WNBA, you know, in the NBA, when you have like a 25 point game, you'll see uh, two or three possessions sometimes where they just hand the ball, hand it in and walk it in, you know, and give it to the other player, and they just sit there and dribble. It's almost like the women, they take the time off the time clock, at least dribble the ball around, pass it around, take a shot. Uh, do the fan, hey, do the fans a solid NBA. Uh, you don't have to rub it in someone's face. Just execute some basketball plays. <laughs> don't uh, insult everyone by tossing the ball in, dribbling it out for 20 seconds, handing the referee – so the other team can come in and do the same thing. Uh, just take a shot. It doesn't matter what the spread is because you shouldn't be paying attention to that anyways. Just <laughs> run a set. Uh, you don't have to slam the dunk it. In your face. Yeah. What do you got here? Oh, well, I know why, you know, it's, it's, I kind of feel bad, right? I was talking about all the moves yesterday and look, look what I'm on. I'm on the, the sky. I'm on the sky here, Ramon. They're two and one over their last three games, scoring 82 points a game. Fever, 0-3, scoring 77. Uh, the Sky like to play on Sunday. Um, you know, I think that's another thing. If I look at scoring on the weekends, they're elevated. Ooh. I don't know if they're like saying, hey, we want this uh, We want this viewership. We want to go ahead and uh, give everyone out there some good games. I don't know what it is, but scoring's up like 3 or 4% on the weekends here as well. Uh, Sky, 5-2 in their last seven Sunday games. Uh I like the sky here on the points. I think it's going to be really close. I have it right within this uh, three points here. So it's going to be interesting. Oh, okay. okay, I got you. I um, mean, he says on the sky, here's fever, though, for a crush. Arnez says take the fever. Ron G on the fever. Sports girl on the fever. Right. <laughs> Just taking the money line there, yeah. I, I've asked everyone to come up with their own nickname, and here's the rich might have to leave the country special plan today is on the sky. He's going to be ran out, right? <laughs> here's dying the over for Sue. And Jay says, take the sky. I don't know, Renoir. I think they should raise the rim for the men. How about that? Right. There you go. <laughs> uh, I'll take the under in this one. Mindy. What do we got with uh, Wimby? What's what is he? Seven, eight? How tall is, is he? he? Right, Wimby. I'm right. <laughs> he uh, dunks it standing, pretty much. Well, it's kind of funny, you know. I was watching that thirty for thirty yesterday with Bill Walton, and geez, oh, you did dude. watch it. Okay. Yeah, did you watch it yesterday? I haven't, but did they mention? Uh, I don't know, you know, uh, you know, if you caught this or if I've ever mentioned it. Uh, I mean, I know I talk about my high. Uh, Bill went with uh, Helix High. Did they mention? Yeah, 
Okay. He showed lots of old uh, photos from from Helix. Him and his uh, brother, I guess, played at the same time. Yeah, Bruce um, Walton, he played for the Dallas Cowboys. Right. Uh, so he was huge, right? And uh, Bill is this little scrawny guy, but just could just literally like drop the ball and whoop. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. It was really good. You should check it out. Well, I'm sure. I mean, I know Bill's story. Having not seen it, I'm sure one of the most famous stories told on there was when uh, uh, Elvin Hayes called Bill's house and talked to his mom and said, uh, you know, he Helix had like the best gym in the whole uh, city and uh, Bill had the keys to the gym, even though he was just a student. <laughs> and Elvin Hayes called Bill Walton up and said uh, uh, to Bill's mom, uh, this is Big E. Can you tell Bill we need to get in the, uh, Billy, that we need to get in the gym? And, you know, Bill's mom uh, says, uh, Billy, there's a big E on the phone and he needs to get, it was Elvin Hay, right? I mean, just like <laughs> the legend of the game, just calling up little Billy to get in the gym at the high school so they could work out. Awesome. All right. Uh,